Hi folks, Stan here, WB2LQF, and I've got my KD1JV Deluxe Tenor Dipper from Pacific Antenna at www.qrpkits.com. This is not something new. I have had it in my, uh, in my uh, shack for probably almost 10 years, uh, so it's not the newest model which is currently available, but uh, it served me well. Instead of spending a whole bunch of money for an MFJ 259 or 269 that does a lot more than I need, I, uh, I decided to spend $45 on this kit. And as you can see, I wasn't too particular about uh, how I house it. It's just a piece of board with some rubber feet. All right. And uh, everything is kind of just uh, mounted uh, breadboard style on it. Runs on a 9-volt battery. And... Uh, does everything that I need. Uh, if we if we turn it on with the switch. All right. See? Has two ranges. It covers a total of uh, from 3 to 30 megahertz. And uh, it's got a four-digit digital display. Uh, it's got a, a shift uh, key here where if we... There... We can shift it up and down. There's 20.57 megahertz. Now you see 574. Well, it's moving around because there's no antenna, but you can see we shift down to the 100 kilohertz uh, position. And there's a nice bright LED there. Uh, you connect your antenna right there. And then you can sweep the antenna and you can find out where it's resonant at. Okay. Real, real simple and very, very effective. Uh, how it works is that uh, there's a voltage-controlled RC oscillator in it that generates a 5-volt uh, square wave signal, which drives a resistive wheat, wheatstone bridge. And one leg of that bridge is your antenna. A wideband step-up transformer is connected across the bridge, detects the signal produced when the bridge is unbalanced, and this signal is further amplified by a Darlington pair transistor amplifier. And a high brightness LED is used to visually indicate the current in the collector of the amplifier. When the antenna impedance at the unknown leg of the bridge, that's your antenna, is equal to 50 ohms, the bridge is in balance, and the LED goes out. And that's how it got its name, the Tenna Dipper. And I was reading from a cheat sheet that I got here because I'm not uh, I'm not some kind of a professional engineer, but I do know quality when I see it. And for 45 bucks, couldn't go wrong here. The newest version, which is on sale now at Pacific Antenna, that is once again www.qrpkits.com. Still 45 dollars, and apparently it comes with a really nice case. I understand you got to do a little work to put the case together, and I think there's some uh, some sort of decals that you have to put on yourself, so it's not like some fancy silk screen case. But heck, don't complain. For 45 bucks, you got something, and every time you want to play around with an antenna, you can find out just how far you are from the residence point that you want to achieve. It's also handy, I've found out, uh, because you see this is a uh, this is a, uh, a BNC connector, and I have a couple of uh, converters to go to uh, 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 SO239s or PL259, depending on what I want. I got them off of uh, Amazon like an idiot. You know, where you buy 20 of them for $5, and they come from China. And when you buy 20, about 15 don't work. And I found the 15 that didn't work because I got all kinds of weird results when I couldn't understand why my antenna was working sporadically. Uh, another thing you can do with this is you can pre-tune your uh, antenna tuner if you want. Uh, to do that, you would connect this up, set the frequency here that, uh, you know, you want to operate on. Let's say you want to operate on, uh, oh, I don't know, let's pick something, 14.120, okay? Just like that. And uh, then you can adjust your antenna tuner until the LED goes out. So uh, you got some, uh, you got some facility for a $45 kit that isn't all that difficult to put together. And uh, 
I suggest now that we adjourn to my shack and uh, we'll try it out, okay? See how good my antenna is. My wife and I live in a in a condominium, a townhouse. We're retired, and uh, I have a 63 foot EFH 4010 antenna mounted as an inverted L. Okay, 30 feet high in the backyard. And over here in a Home Depot toolbox is the matching unit. And I have to tell you that it's probably the best antenna investment that uh, I could have made considering my, my circumstances here. The feed line is RG8X. Must be about, uh, I don't know, 20 feet of it, 25 feet of it. And uh, there's a, uh, I forget the mix, but it's a uh, substantial toroid from uh, ferrite toroids. And it uh, goes over, it's got uh, I don't know, about six turns of the RG8X. Goes to my window feed through. And I'll show you the other end in a minute. However, I have a suggestion for all you poor folks with uh, HOA restrictions. One of my suggestions is uh, consider what I did. You join the HOA board. You, uh, you're you very pleasant. You do a good job. You volunteer for a lot of crap. And then uh, you go ahead and you agree to become an officer, you know, treasurer, secretary, vice president. I happen to be the vice president. And then after about a year or so, when you've done some good things and they uh, they really need you, because nobody wants to be in an HOA board, you know, except really old people, of which I'm not quite that old at 71, but I guess I qualify. Uh, and pretty soon uh, you go ahead and you ask if you can have permission to put up an antenna that you can hardly see from the ground. And uh, voila, suddenly there's no resistance. Hey, you know what? It's worth a try. So let's go inside and see the other end of the situation. And then we'll check out the, uh, the antenna uh, analyzer there, the antenna dipper, and see how well that uh, agrees with the fact that this is supposed to be a 40, 20, 15, and 10 meter resonant antenna. Okay, see you inside. Okay, I connected a small RG58 jumper here to a uh, makeshift uh, connection. And there's a tenor dipper. Now, remember, the idea is to get that SWR to go down low, maybe even out. So let's see. It's Oh boy, how about we got that light completely out? And where are we? We're at seven point. Oh, try it again. There we are. And uh, seven point oh five. It starts. Seven point one hundred is completely out, and it don't start to get bright till seven point one fifty. Seven point oh seventy. It's completely out. It looks like. That's good. That's about where I like to hang out, around 70, 30 kilohertz on 40 meters. Now, let's uh, flip the frequency range slip switch up. And let's check out, where are we here? Oh, 15 meters. All right. Good move. Look at that. The SWR is down here. Okay, look for that. Oh, good bandwidth. I'm right in the CW portion for 15 meters. Let's go down to 20 meters. Very good. Looks like I'm a little high on 20 meters, but it's definitely uh, 2, 1 or under. 
that light's not very bright at all. It looks a heck of a lot uh, brighter in the uh, camera uh, lens, I can tell you, than uh, when I look off to the side here. Very good. So the antenna has uh, excellent bandwidth in the low SWR, and I'm interested in 40, 20, and 15, and uh, it's doing what it says it does. I use the MFJ uh, Versa Tuner for uh, 80 and uh, 30 and 12 meters, and that works just fine. That's not a problem at all. Of course, it's 63 feet. I don't have a great deal of efficiency in 80 meters, but you know what? In the winter time, when the static level is low, it's kind of fun to get on and make some local contacts in 80 meters. And with 100 watts, I do fine. Heck, I even do fine on QRP with 80 meters. Uh, so I'm not all hung up on that. All right, but that's a tenor dipper.